Well, Tommy, our next surprise guest is Martin Hayes! <laughs> Yeah, very happy to meet you. Um, I saw you out in Inna Shear uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe. Oh. Um, I didn't see you. <laughs> it's not obligatory that when you see someone, they have to see you as well. Do you know, oh, that's... Yeah, I'd have liked to, you know. <laughs> um, and I remember one of the, the one of, I think the first album that I bought belonging to you was the Live in Seattle one. Mm. And it's an amazing bit of trad music, uh, all the more remarkable the fact that it's recorded in America. Um, one of the tunes is about 22 or 23 minutes long, and it blew me away. And finally, just to get all the stuff off my chest, um, one of my favourite albums is the album that you recorded with your father by the shores of Loch Graney, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was an album which Martin recorded, if I'm remembering it right now, uh, with your dad in the kitchen before he'd go for sessions with the Tulla Cayley band? Well, it, it was pretty close to being that, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, I'd been in America for some time before that and my father had gotten sick mm. and I came back and um, we, we realised we'd never recorded anything together. And a friend of mine, Matt Purcell, uh, just had a small little recording studio, just actually recording cassette at the time. And so we just took a couple of hours one evening before he went off to play Cayley, and we just recorded that, just so we would have it for yeah. ourselves, you know? And... Um, it was beautiful music, because there's... A, the, the stuff with, um, with Dennis, can, it, it, it floats. Yeah. Do you know, it, it, it moves on wind, like, you know, it, it's out there, you know? Yeah, but stuff yeah. with your dad, yeah. just... It's, it's very earthy, yeah. yeah. He, he loved to play for dancers and house... He, he would have grown up as a, as a kid playing house dances with my uncle Paddy Canny, two fiddle players. They would cycle off with fiddles to their, strapped to their back and yeah. go and play in a schoolhouse. So th there was this very earthy kind of connectedness in, in the way they played. And when I played with my father, it was just like... It just happened so naturally. Yeah. We didn't have to think about it. We didn't have to talk about it. We didn't... We just play it, and that was it. Uh, would you play us a tune and talk us through a, the story of it? Uh, sure. And that kind of a thing. I'd love to hear something like that, okay. if that was OK. Well, I, I didn't... I mean, a bit like yourself, I, I haven't made a plan right now. But... Uh, How's uh, it working out for you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know... You know, I got various voices going on in the back of my head right now. But, uh, <laughs> So, oh, oh. well, it, it, I, I, I do a bit like what you do, and I, I remember watching that movie that you made where you uh, went on this tour and you, you, you started from zero every night. And I know there were nights it didn't work and there were nights it did, but it, it was, I could clearly see, and it had an impact on me, uh, your efforts to, you know, be real. And, to, and the show is obviously about that as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, this isn't more than a trick here uh, uh, to get people to come on and see what happens, because you have no idea what it's like to talk with me, no. or vice versa, but... And I don't know what to play, so I'm still talking, but anyway... <laughs> uh, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I remember uh, in, in fiddle workshops, I, I, I would try to teach people the structure of a tune, you know? Or, or, or how I imagined the tune. And there was a tune called the, um, the Sailor's Bonnet, which, when it came up in a session, I found it incredibly irritating and wanted to get past that one as fast as possible. Yeah. And, um, but then I decided to teach it to a class one day. And so I, in, in order to teach it, I just wanted to break it down slowly. And slowly but surely, I began to recognize this incredible beauty that I myself was previously failing to see. Was that because it was? It, so it used to be played in this kind of. We ran to it. Ran to it. You know, it's okay. like it, it'd be like you know reading poetry at the fastest speed okay. that you could read poetry. You can imagine what you get. Yeah, yeah, Nothing. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we often do that with tunes. It's just a kind of a mindless. Slow down, stretch it out. Yeah, exactly, and see what was in it. So, these tunes are like, they usually start with one inspired phrase. And that phrase is very often repeated, uh, just a little twist on the end. So it be da dee dee da dee 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 da dee da dee 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 dum, dee 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 da dee 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 d
Don't know why that change is pleasing, but it is. But the entire tune is made up of, of that kind of composition yeah. of, of one phrase speaking to the other. It's like a little conversation. Anyway, I'll, I'll play the slow down version of Please. it and see if it makes sense. How often do you gig? Uh, I, I, I gig a lot because I, I enjoy it. Um, and uh, like the main thing for me in music is playing live and, and just being there in the moment of that. So I, I do more than I should, really. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, well, I'm probably uh, six months of the year, you know, like it's, it's I do too much. I, I'm going to cut it back. <laughs> and do you have kids? Uh, no. Uh, well, my. <laughs> Good question. But anyway, uh, as, no, uh, my, my, my wife had kids before I met her. We, we just got married about six years ago. Okay. So, uh, but her three sons, they're up and raised anyway, so oh, I don't okay. really have children. Is there a feeling then, because when you were playing the tune there, you, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you could have just taken heroin. You know, yeah. there was a beauty, you were kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of that, yeah. Uh, is there... Uh, I put them kind of curious. It might be a silly question. Is the feeling during that better than when the better than the feeling that when the tune finishes? Uh, no. You see, what it is is like you know, in in the course of a few minutes, you can only show just a tiny snippet. It'd be like as if we carved out thirty seconds of our conversation. It wouldn't really capture yeah. what we're talking about or who we are. So, in the course of an evening of music, it's it's a journey through feelings. It's a journey to you know, ecstatic expression, to our pure energy and raw joy yeah. and wildness and delicacy and sweetness and sadness and as many of the, you know, I mean, the big thing for me in Irish music was realising that it, in fact, is a complete musical language and that, like, the, f the full variety of expression can be expressed yeah. through that, you know, and so that's what I've been attempting to do most it, of my life, you know. You're a, you're a beautiful presence to have in our culture. <laughs> Thank you. You know, really, to have something that uh, spiritual and ordinary... Yeah. That kind of uplifting and uh, foot tapping. Uh, yeah. We're lucky to have you. It's a it's a bit like the idea of found art, you know, um, like where I grew up. Uh, I, this was what I saw in the musicians. Now, not all the musicians were great musicians or even the great ones weren't great all the time. And lots of it didn't work, in fact, most of the time. But if you were there often enough and you were paying enough attention, almost all of these musicians, humble and unheard of musicians, had glorious moments of joy yeah. and experience. And so for me, I just collected in my memory these moments 
And I've decided that, that those are the moments that define the music and define those musicians. So like the beauty that I'm attempting to express is the beauty that I felt like I saw uh, around me uh, with these musicians. And I often felt like that their inner desire to express this was, was very often overlooked and misunderstood and not properly expressed because like, the recording studio is not friendly to that kind of very subtle, nuanced feeling. No. Neither is the television studio or anywhere that, that they would have been presented would almost diminish the real truth of what they had to say. So for me, it was very important to understand what was being said and what was being felt and to see if I could embody that in some way, if I could take that story with me and help continue to deliver that. But it's also, it's, it's in a way that's, it's, it's almost, you know, our kids are in school today and they're taught, okay, study hard, uh, the economy needs electricians and <laughs> computer wizards. The economy needs this. Ireland is an economy, GDP this, GDP that. Um, and there's so much pressure on kids to be choosing something and be going to university and getting qualified and getting working and contributing. Yeah. And what you're saying, it seems to me that you see a moment, you're surrounded by moments, and you said, I'm going to base my life on that rather than yeah. something that comes from a minister for finance, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, like school for me was, was, this was my salvation. Um, I would play this before I go to school in the morning, not because I needed to practice so much or that I wanted to do that. It was, I just wanted the experience. And bef when I would get home from school in the evening, I would just get my fiddle and play huh. before I had dinner. Just, and then I would like play for a break from homework. And then <laughs> I would play more than I would do homework, you know? So it was like, it was like the antidote to school. It was the antidote to, to that kind of system of thinking and, and being. So I, I kind of, crawled into this instrument here when I was a, a young teenager. And it, it really, you know... It was, That's it was, inspirational stuff for yeah. kids to hear, Martin. That really yeah. is. That's powerful. Well, you know? Yeah, but I mean, uh, the thing was, I, I have the nice feeling that, that I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to do. You know, well, that's just funny because, you know, some, sometimes when um, we do the thing that we're supposed to be doing, we receive external kindness that makes it possible sometimes, you know. So. I think so, yeah. I don't have a great plan for the future. I'm just going to keep playing out to the end, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, th that sounds ideal, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Martin Hayes. <laughs> that was beautiful. You can play a song for us later. Stay sitting there, yeah.